Do it. And I'll get started and open up to questions for William Carlson there on the left, Max Pacioretty on the right. We'll start with Jesse Granger from The Athletic. Hey, Max, can you just take us through that goal from uh, trying to get position in front of the net, what you saw and getting the stick on it? Yeah, I mean, it just seemed like it's tough to believe when you miss so many chances. But with Marshy breaking the ice, this line here, these guys, Carly's line, really got us going tonight. And, uh, you know, you, you get that first goal, you just have a feeling the next one's going to come. And so when that floater comes in from Holdy, you just have a little bit more confidence that you're going to tip it. And, uh, yeah, that's how it played out. Next question tonight goes to Ben Goats with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Hey, Max, your line was maxed up against their top guys a lot tonight. Just what are the keys to uh, defending that line, and why have you guys been able to have so much success against them at five on five this series? I mean, you don't want to you don't want to say we're defending them. We want to make them defend, and it's no secret that's the the way to play against top guys in the league. I mean. McKinnon is uh, probably the fastest guy in the league. And if you let him wind up with speed uh, coming back in his end, he's going to make you pay. So we want to try and play in down in their end, uh, have them waste some energy and make them stop in their own end. And uh, it's not going to be perfect every night. <clears throat> They're a, a great uh, a great line that's had a lot of success. So we just got to do the best we can every night. We'll go to Justin Emerson, Las Vegas Sun. Hey, William, not to be over dramatic, but considering where the game was, where the series is, do you think Jonathan Marchessault's goal saved the series? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, that goal obviously gave us the energy and, uh, you know, for them to, to finish it off. And I mean, going down 3 nothing is, is really hard in, in hockey. Um, so uh, a huge goal. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, time will tell how huge it's going to be. I so we'll go to Mark Spector from Sportsnet. Yeah, Max, uh, maybe you could just let us in on, I know you guys are involved in the game and, it, and, and you know, we're sitting on the outside watching a hockey game that was one of the most entertaining games I've forever. Uh, can you get a sense with a full crowd and a million chances and it was really wide open hockey. It didn't look like, typical close to the vest playoff hockey by any means could you is there any way for a player to enjoy it as much as the eighteen thousand people in the stands did max you know i truthfully i really did enjoy it and and i'm not saying i just because we came out on top it's just so much fun to play in front of fans especially our fans um you know we we've talked about so often how they're able to help us uh, take over a game and uh they stayed positive with us right to the very end there and, and once we we're able to break through you use that momentum that they give us. I mean, the place is electric. You could probably see and feel it, you know, up top in the stands, through the TV. This is the best place to play, and especially in the playoffs, it's a lot of fun. Time for a couple more tonight with William and Max. Next, go to Christopher Chapman, Fox Sports, Las Vegas. Yeah, hey, Max. You mentioned Nick Holden getting the assist on your goal. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a consummate professional, so can you talk about just – what having a guy like that mean to this team? Because obviously he probably didn't play as much as he would have wanted to in the regular season, but he seems to be lighting it up now in the postseason. Uh, Nick Holden means the world to this team. He, you know, was uh, dealt a tough hand there, not playing for so long. Every single day you came to the rink, the guy had a smile on his face. Didn't act any different if he's in the lineup, you know, with uh, the top pair or if he's not in the lineup. And that mindset, that attitude is contagious. He was able to step in. I think he's playing some of the best hockey I've seen him play since I've been here. And he's uh, played a huge, huge part in our success thus far in the playoffs. And it's just really nice to see a guy like that get rewarded. Next question tonight comes from Brian Blessing, Vegas Hockey Hotline. William, outwardly, you're a pretty even keel guy, but can you describe the emotions of the roller coaster ride of how game two ended and then you're able to? bounce back, tie it, and win it late. The, the swings of emotion, how do you guys manage that? Well, um, <clears throat> well, it doesn't matter if you're down or up. Um, you know, um, you're always going to believe. Um, you know, I mean, even when we're down, I still think we have that faith of, uh, you know, we believe in ourselves that we can turn this around. Um, today, for example, was one of those games and, um, to, to tie it up to in, in the game two, too. So um, I think, you know, obviously, 
kind of, <laughs> you'd rather want to play with the lead, but uh, that's what I like about this team that we, we, we never give up. So, um, <clears throat> so try to maintain, uh, you know, try to maintain the emotion. Uh, where, where we need it to be. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Guys, thanks for the time tonight. Thank you. We're expecting Mark Andre Fleury and Mark Stone to be available next tonight. Fantastic. I'll take questions from Mark Stone on the left, Mark Andre Fleury on the right. We'll start with Jesse Granger from The Athletic. For Mark Stone, obviously a big goal by Patch Ready at the end, but can you talk about just the plays he made throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, he's been big, a uh, big addition to our lineup since, uh, since game seven. Um, you know, he's our dynam most dynamic forward. Um, he can score from all over, uh, all over the ice. Uh, you know, just just a name that uh, the other team has to circle and key on that, that opens up space for, for the rest of us. Um, you know, he's been getting his chances. Uh, he's been making uh, those subtle little plays uh, on the power play. Um, and like I said, he's just been a, a, a huge, uh, a huge get to get back in our lineup for our depth. Um, he makes uh, uh, he makes the scoring goals look pretty easy, and he scores them in different ways. So, um, yeah, he's been huge for us. Next, we'll go to Justin Emerson, the Las Vegas Sun. Hey, Mark Stone, you, Max, and Chandler bottled up their top line pretty good. I guess, what do you think that you did well against them tonight? Um, you know, you're not going to completely eliminate them. Um, they're going to get their chances. Uh, you know, they're uh, one of the best lines in the league for a reason, but um, we see ourselves as uh, one of the best lines in the league as well. Um, I think Chandler's speed uh, has been key for that. Uh, he skates the middle of the ice, uh, you know, just as well as, as anyone in this league. <clears throat> and uh, we're not trying not to change much. Uh, we're trying to uh, create ozone time, uh, force them to come 200 feet. Uh, you turn the puck over with McKinnon, um, he's gone. And it really puts a ton of pressure on your defense. Uh, and I think Theodore uh, back there and, and Holden have done a great job with gaps and, uh, and Theo's speed. Next question tonight goes to Willie Ramirez from the Associated Press. Mark Andre, uh, Mark talked very highly of, of the Max, but for the four year guys that have been here since day one, you've seen uh, Jonathan make big play after big play uh, to the Stanley Cup run the first year and then just throughout. Can you just talk about how he continues to step up at you know, at the time you, this team is needed at the most. Yeah, <clears throat> it's been awesome. You know, it's it's obviously a big part of the team and uh, since day one, right? Um, he's, he's a guy that works hard, uh, goes to the corner, goes in front of that. Uh, he's got a great shot, uh, battles hard, you know, and um, ma makes the right play. I think he's, he's, he's a good leader for a team with the way they plays, the intensity he brings. Um, he's been bringing it for, for years now and... Um, you know, it's it's fun to see uh, how he carries himself with confidence and um, is able to make those big plays uh, during playoffs. Next question tonight goes to Ben Goats with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Hey, for Mark Stone, uh, you guys were making a push a little bit there in the third period before Marcia Sow's goal. Just did you feel that that goal was coming? If you guys were kept playing that way. Yeah, I mean that's a huge goal by Marcia. Um, yeah, he sticks with it. Um, but yeah, we had tons of chances. Uh, just a bunch of good looks. I think, you know, Hager had a couple of good jumping in. Uh, RD was uh, was transported the puck really well, uh, and we kind of put them on their heels a bit. Um, yeah, once we got that uh, second goal, uh, the momentum shifted. Uh, our build that was the loudest I've had a building in, in quite some time. Um, and then we get that third one. Uh, your ears start ringing, uh, and you could just feel. Uh, Feel the uh, the intensity and the momentum just shift our way, and 
Um, you know, I think we had four and a half minutes to, uh, to get through. And, you know, I think they had one, one or two chances, but the uh, Flower made a couple of uh, tight five hole saves, which were, were key. Next question goes to Brian Blessing, Vegas Hockey Hotline. Mark Andre, it's funny how things seem to work out. Game two, you, know, you and Rantanen have a showdown. He wins that one. He's got the puck on his stick at the tail end of the game again tonight. You get the best of that one. Uh, talk about that final save and just trying to get the best of him there. <laughs> Yeah, obviously it was uh, frustrating, you know, losing that game two in overtime there. Um, you know, so I was, I was happy, <laughs> not happy, but like, I had a chance to, to redeem myself a bit there. And, um, you know, that was close. He, uh, he looked up, you know, like he was uh, coming higher and then uh, squeaked it five goals. So, um, you know, I was uh, lucky enough to uh, go down quick enough to plan on it. And it was a good feeling. We'll go to Christopher Chapman from Fox Sports, Las Vegas. Yeah, hi, Mark Andre. I just want to follow up on that because after that save, it was a it was a timeout, and the, the crowd went absolutely insane. They're chanting your name. Could you just kind of walk us through that moment of what it was like for the first time in 15 months to have 17 plus thousand people in, in the arena just going crazy? Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. You know, we've been lucky to be, you know that we had some some fans since the beginning of the playoffs here and. Uh, you know, it was it was nice, it was good, but tonight tonight was something else. You know, after uh, that big third goal we had, and um, you know, if you when you make a save and people cheer and like that, and uh, gives you goosebumps. You know, I still get some now, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It gives you a great feeling, you know, and um, that's that's the reason why playing this game is gonna be so much fun. Last question here tonight from Mark, and Mark goes to Justin Emerson, Las Vegas Sun. Hey, for Mark Stone, Mark Andre had kind of touched on Jonathan Marsh or so, but he had that goal too in game two of the Minnesota series. You guys had just went down and he came back and tied it a couple of seconds later or whatever. I guess, can you just touch on his neck for scoring a big goal when you guys need it the most? Yeah, I mean, you know, that line's been together for, um, what is it now? Four, four years. Four years. Yeah. Um, you know, the chemistry is, you know, is just natural for those guys. I and mean, Smitty makes a Incredible play at the blue line. Um, and I don't know if he was the one that slid it, but uh, or Carly slid it over to Marshy for the uh, um, kind of partial breakaway. And uh, like I said, kind of sticks with it. Um, but for sure, I mean, he's, he's come up clutch for this organization uh, since day one. Um, you know, he's one of the guys who um, helped build uh, the culture of this team. Um, and, and that's why uh, you see us uh, able to, to come back in these games. Uh, we could have easily, you know, folded the tent, backed up and, uh, you know, gone down 0-3. But, um, you know, he's a big guy, uh, uh, big time player, steps up for us uh, when we need it. Uh, and today was uh, <laughs> was a huge goal. Uh, you could just build the momentum and then we scored one, one or two shifts later and you could just do it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're expecting Jonathan Marsh or so and Nick Holden to also be available. Now open to questions for Jonathan Marsh. So on the left, Nick Holden on the right. Start with Christopher Chapman from Fox Sports, Las Vegas. Hi, Nick. Um, can you just talk about what this season's been like for you? I know you only you didn't probably play as much as you wanted to in the regular season, but now you're really taking advantage of your opportunities in the postseason. Uh, yeah, obviously. I uh, wish I would have played more in the regular season. Didn't, but it doesn't matter now. Uh, we're we're playing now in the playoffs. All that matters is uh, is winning. And obviously, uh, fortunate to be in the lineup right now and just trying to make the most of it. This question comes from Ben Goats, Las Vegas Review Journal. 
Hey, Nick, can you just take us through what you saw on uh, Max Petretti's goal there and what the uh, taking in the reaction of the crowd was like after that? Yeah, uh, when Stones turned back and just put the puck, laid the puck in for me, I just made sure I hit it hard and, and obviously Patch got a great tip on it. And uh, the building was already loud from when Marchi uh, had scored and uh, it got much, much louder. Uh, and so it was pretty exciting uh, for our group uh, to get that go-ahead goal. Next, we'll go to Justin Emerson, Las Vegas Sun. Hey, Jonathan, your goal, and then Max is not long after. I guess not to be over dramatic, but do you think that saved the series? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of hockey to play. I mean, uh, I think uh, last game we uh, we played a great, uh, a great game, and we should have had a better outcome. But I mean, tonight we uh, we stuck with it, and I like obviously we we're down two one, but. We were the better team out there tonight, and uh, and and we got a little uh, some lucky bounces there, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can turn that around. But it, now it's all about next game. Like we can't get too high or too low after games. It doesn't matter if we lose seven one or we win three two. It's it's you got to focus on the next game, and uh, that's what we're gonna do. Let's go to Story Bond Tony, Vegas Golden Knights. We heard the word belief a lot. This group just has that belief in itself. You guys are obviously veteran, but why is there late in a game down 0-2 in a series that there is no panic from you guys? Well, nothing's going to feel so. No one's going to feel sorry for us. I mean, we got to, obviously we go on the road and you always want to get one uh, on the road and we didn't do, do the job over there. So we come back and we got to take care of business here and, I mean, a, a series it doesn't get win after the first game or the second year, the second game or the third game. It gets win when you win four. So uh, uh, we learned from that uh, with with the past series. Also, we let Minnesota come back in the series for no reason, really. So uh, honestly, we gotta learn from uh, from our mistakes and uh, uh, win or lose next game. We gotta focus on the next game, and uh, I think we showed that we can play against that group and. Uh, we have uh, to be aware when there are big guns on the ice. And when we do that, I think uh, we can get a good outcome. Next question comes from Jesse Granger with The Athletic. Hey, for Nick, can you talk about Max Pacioretty's performance tonight? Not just the, the big goal at the end, obviously, but it just seemed like he was everywhere on the ice. Yeah, I think uh, Max, I don't even know how many uh, opportunities he had tonight. Uh, it just shows how, uh, how good he was playing. Uh, he was getting chances in front of the net. He had that breakaway. Um, it's just great to see a guy that missed a little bit of time here, came back, and since he's been back, he's been strong. He's been, uh, uh, obviously, all year really good for us, but in the playoffs now, uh, it's great to see him being able to score. I'll take two final questions here for John and Nick. Next, we'll go to Mark Spector, Sportsnet. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Doing good, Spec, you? All right, man. Uh, listen, you guys are pros and you play in front of big crowds all the time. And But because you didn't get them this year, right? It was such a goofy year with no crowds. What's it like to jump back into this playoff atmosphere and have a full house in one of the great buildings? Was it as cool to play in that game as it was for us guys watching on TV? Uh, it's probably cooler. I mean, like you said, uh, to not have fans all or full capacity fans all year for us, at least. Um, it, it's just a different atmosphere. And so when we came out for warmups and then uh, the start of the game, uh, the building was loud and energetic. And then obviously when we score those two quick goals in the third period, uh, I don't think I've played in a louder building uh, when that happened. So uh, our rank, uh, the entertainment value is there, but uh, our fans know how to bring it. And they definitely brought it today. Final question for Jonathan and Nick goes to Willie Ramirez, Associated Press. Jonathan, since year one, we've seen a lot of forwards come and go. Some stayed. The one constant has been your line. Is there a sense of pride with you three, you, William, and Riley, um, you know, tonight, two of the three goals and, and just always coming up big? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're since the beginning and uh, obviously it, the Golden Knights kind of give us like uh, a chance to be a more regular player and a more offensive player in the NHL. And obviously we took that, uh, we take that organization. It's our family. And uh, obviously we believe in, uh, in each, in, in each other, but also uh, what the management did to bring like 
always a good fit for our group. Uh, it's been actually amazing. And uh, it's been a, a rocky road, but I think uh, this year we have a good team. And uh, I mean, we, uh, we, everybody uh, respect each other and respect each other's role. And that's how you built a, 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 a franchise and a successful one. So uh, it's been a, it's, it's been great, but I mean, it's, it's never going to be, uh, we're never going to be, satisfied until we actually win it all and i think we have the team for that but we like i said we got to take one team at a time uh one team one game at a time and uh we're just going to focus on game four thanks guys thank you Now I'll take a few questions for head coach Pete DeBoer. We'll start with Brian Blessing from the Vegas Hockey Hotline. Hey, Brian. Hello, Pete. Can, can you just talk, I mean, from the coach's perspective, the player's perspective, the swings of emotion, how game two ended, the way this game went, how you guys try to, you know, stay professional and have an even keel and, and execute. <clears throat> yeah, perseverance. Um, you know, we just stuck with it. We, we just uh, kept our belief in our game, uh, which I think has been in a good place. If if you throw out game one, uh, even back to the, the last game of the season, we played them here uh, for uh, uh, first place overall. You know, we, we played some some pretty good periods of hockey against them. So, you know, just a matter of sticking with it. I, I think, you know, the, the crowd was so awesome. The full building was so great. Um, it was so nice to to be back in that type of atmosphere again. And, and they, they were huge uh, in the third period for us, uh, you know, sticking with us and keeping the energy levels up. And, uh, you know, it was awesome. Uh, it, was, it was nice to be back at home with a with a full house next question tonight comes from justin emerson las vegas son justin seems like all season when you guys have needed a big goal it's been jonathan marsh so it's been right there to net it for you i guess what can you say about his ability to kind of step up when the when the moment calls for it you know what i thought our best players were were all good tonight Mar marshy was on that list uh that patch was great stoney was great um, I mean, we, we just had a, we had a full team effort and, uh, um, you know, I think, uh, Marshy's, you know, for me has, uh, has had a great season for us. I think, uh, you know, we left the bubble. He was disappointed, uh, that we lost and he came back and, and I, I think he's been really consistently good all year for us. We'll go to Jesse Granger from the athletic Jesse. Pete, you mentioned how good the top players are. Patch Reddy scores the game-winning goal, but it seemed like he was everywhere on the ice. What impressed you most yeah. about his effort tonight other than the goal? Yeah, that, you know what? That's as, as normal as Patch has looked. Um, came back for Game 7 of the Minnesota series really with, with very little uh, practice time. And, and, you know, I thought played on adrenaline, gave us a real good boost that night, but that catches up to you and, and – you know, tonight was was the first night I thought he's really started to look like his old self again. Um, you know, and he was he, he was he was big, he was heavy, he was hard, he was attacking, had some real good looks. You know, and obviously a huge goal at the end. Next question comes from Ben Goats with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, Ben. Hey, Pete. You had Stevenson's line out against McKinnon's a lot tonight. What did you like about that matchup, and how do you think they performed tonight? Like I said, I, I thought all our big guys were great. Uh, and, and, you know, our whole team was great. But your best players have to be your best players. And I, I thought, uh, you know, we had everybody pulling in the right direction. You know, we're not a real matchup team. Um, 
you know, we want to get into that four line rhythm. And I think uh, that's always when we play our best. And I thought our fourth line gave us some, some fantastic shifts, especially early in the, in that game. Um, you know, so, you know, as far as matchups go, that, that's not something that, uh, that we're chasing. I'll take one final question tonight. That goes to Willie Ramirez, Associated Press. Hey, Willie. Hey, Pete. You talked about Jonathan March just saw, but, and I think I asked you this during the regular season, but that original quote unquote misfit line, you got to see it up close when you were at San Jose and now coaching. It, it seems to just play with the sense of pride that it's been here all four years and it's some, somewhat, and I think you called it the, the, the core of, of the forward group. Can you just touch on that, that line, two of the three goals tonight? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I think I use the word identity. I think I think they're the identity of this franchise. You know, they're three guys that uh, all bring something different to the table. All have been probably overlooked at some point in their career. They have great chemistry, uh, and they they hop over the boards and, and work hard every single night and are hard to play against. But you know that that chemistry that they have uh, is hard to replicate. So we haven't messed too much with it. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. That'll conclude the post-game availability. We'll send out recordings in just a bit. Thanks, everyone, for the time tonight.